Hello and welcome to Pass the Turn. This is another Tabletop Tuesday segment with your host, I am Aaron Francis. Forgive the hair and all that shit. I've just woken up and uh, just need to get another Tabletop um, game video to the table uh, as we're still fairly behind. But this weekend we are going to be doing a lot of filming and a lot of content regarding this segment of the channel. So again, it's just going to be myself playing a little game called Dungeon Quest today uh, by Fantasy Flight Games. And it's a really, really simple game. Uh, I'm going to show you the cover. Dungeon Quest. Fantasy Flight game. Um, so it's a very, very simple game where you are an adventurer. Um, one of six, I think. Uh, or five. And you are in... It's set in the Terranoff universe, which is the same universe as Rune Wars, Descent, um, and a couple of others. And you're basically... Just an adventurer that's heard about a cave with a dragon that has loads of different treasures in. Um, and uh, you just want to go in there and raid the place and get out before the uh, the tomb door shuts behind you at night. So basically, I think it's like a magical, magical, um, magical dungeon that its doors open during the day. But then if you get trapped in there, if you, if you spend too much time in there at night, the door shuts behind you. Um, so you have to get in, get your stuff, and get out. Now, in a solo game, um, it's all about just finding some treasure. If you can get to the, the dragon chamber, which is in the middle, then obviously that's great. You can get a lot of good treasure there. It's mainly just about, in a solo effort, uh, trying to get as much points as you can and pressing your luck enough um, to try and beat your personal high score. It's a very, very luck-driven game. As you'll see, there's a lot of card drawing and a lot of the game playing you rather than you playing the game, which is what I've come to like with board games anyway. So um, I'm not very good with strategy and all that sort of stuff, so I like a game that plays me as well as me playing it. Uh, so first of all, the thing we have to do is set the time track to um, 1 or 0. So it starts up here. This is the indication of the sun going down the track and reaching uh, the non, uh, well, the, the darkness, basically. Um, so that's the time track up there. Every round, this ticks down. So that's been set up. We've set up all the cards down here in their respective places. So every time I would draw a card, I would just draw one of these ones down here. A couple of dice come with the game. Uh, I need to choose my character. So we've got uh, quite a few different characters that you can choose from. You can choose uh, this guy, Brother Gerin. Looks like a cultist guy. Got Hugo the Glorious, which is like your standard warrior. We got Tatiana, who looks like an archer sort of character. We got uh, Krutzbeck, the dwarf, high, very, very, very high constitution. We got Lindel, the uh, dexterous elf, and then we have Chandra and Nightblaze, more of like a scout exploration type character. Um, so today, I think I'm just going to go with um, who should I go with? Let's roll a dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Throw on dice. Who goes with? Who I go with? Five. I go with Lindor. So Lindor doesn't really have much strength, much armor, uh, but he does have um, he does have good agility. Well, he has no. Sorry, he has good. He has good um, agility and good uh, fighting power. But he doesn't have very good armor, and he has very average luck. And every time I would gain a determination token, he gets an additional determination token. So if he ever fails a test he gets an additional determination token because he's a um, he learns basically from his mistakes, this elf guy. Uh, I find a miniature which represents him, which is this miniature here, Lindor. And you place him in any of these um, any of these areas here. So this is like the entrances to the dungeon. Um, so I'll put him here, just there, ready to go in. So you select the character cards, you also get your uh, catacombs token. So if you ever enter the catacombs, you go underground, and this is represented by your character being underground, this little arrow here. Uh, so I'll place that near my character sheet and return the rest of the characters to the box. Now we now we select at random a rune card. Now a rune card will give you a like a special ability um, that is only used once, and they are quite powerful. Um, so you're de you're designated one of these at random. So I get that one. Turn the rest to the unused pile, and I get the stasis rune. 
Um, so this allows me to discard at the end of your status phase to take an additional turn after this one. So that's quite cool. That's quite cool. Okay, so deck set up, character set up, uh, the sun track is at zero, and we're pretty much ready to go. Now, Dungeon Quest uh, is very, very straightforward in regards to its phases, and that's why I'm showing you it today. It is a very, very straightforward game, and uh, the first thing you would do is designate where you're going. So you can only go to an adjacent space, you can't go diagonally. So Lindor can either go here, this space, or here, this space. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose to go this way. And what you do is draw a random tile out of the tile dungeon bag and, uh, and orient it in the, in the way uh, that it tells you to. I think you can orient it the way you like. Some of them will have arrows that show you, but I think some of them can be placed, but we'll see, I can't remember. So let's choose one random one. And it is a, okay, so this is, this is a bad start. So yeah, there is an arrow for orientation, and basically it's a portcullis. So if you come across a portcullis, you can test your strength to try and lift the gate up and get into the room ahead. Um, but I don't think I'm going to because this room is a dead end. Now in Dungeon Quest this can happen quite a lot is you could basically end the game within five minutes depending on what sort of tiles you draw and this is a prime example of that. So the first tile I drew is a portcullis so I have to spend uh, my strength to try, I try and test my strength to get through otherwise I just waste a turn and if I, even if I did go through there I would end up in a uh, dead end room which I could search for something so maybe there's a hidden door that gets me out of there, or, or, or a way down into the catacombs, but without going in, I don't know. So that's a wasted turn. So I'm going to tick the time track down one, and I'm going to choose not to go in there or test my strength to do so. Um, so the only way I've got to go now is this way. So again, draw another uh, dungeon thing and tick the time down one. Okay, so hopefully this is more nice to me, otherwise the game could be ending fairly quickly. Okay, so this is a little bit better. Um, it still uh, unlocks a dead end room, so I can't go this way, obviously. Uh, I do proceed into this chamber, um, but I can still carry on going this way. So hopefully it opens up some, some ways we can go this way, because if we end, still go, end up going there that way, if there's, a, if there's a, another blockage here, we are screwed with regards to what ways we can go. So, um, so yeah, I move into this room here, and there's a little icon on the bottom of the card with a little dungeon icon on it. And every time you step into a room with one of those icons, you would draw a dungeon card to see what happens. So I draw a dungeon card and it is empty. So the room is empty, nothing happens. Which is what you want in Dungeon Quest because things can easily get out of hand in this game. So again, it's my turn again. So I choose which way I wanna go. The only way I can go is forward. So let's hope uh, another way opens up for us. Um, let's go on to this now. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh, we're still continuing down the same sort of corridor, another blocked off path to the left. Um, but there is a door in front of us now. Um, in order to step through the door, we have to draw a door card. But before we do, we stepped into another dungeon tile room. So we have to draw another dungeon deck card, which is a crypt. So you may explore the crypt for treasure. If you do, draw uh, one crypt card, which I might as well do. I might as well show you what um, what stuff can happen. Um, so there's a crypt in this room here, and I'm going to draw a crypt card as a result. And it's an unstable potion. So I've got an unstable potion now as well. So what it does is it says you may discard the potion at the start of your status phase to roll two dice. And so you roll two dice and accept the result. In this case, it was a six. So I would, nothing happened, nothing would happen at all. Uh, and uh, that, that unstable potion just, you know, just turned out to be a bit of water. But if you were to roll a two, you die. If you roll a three to five, you suffer some damage, or you could heal all of your damage if you roll highly. So again, very, very random card to pick up there, but it is a little bit of loot. So we do have uh, an unstable potion in our inventory at the moment. Um, so that's the uh, third turn down. Right, so now there's a door blocking our way. So if we want to go through the door, we have to draw a door card. Um, so that's what I'm going to do, because that's the only way I can go. So I'm going to draw a door card from the door deck and see what happens. Door is jammed. 
The door does not open. Remain in your current chamber. So what that means is I've just wasted my turn trying to get that door open. Um, so it ticks down again. Uh, well, one after I do this. So again, I'm going to try and open the door. So uh, sun ticks down one. Let's open the door again. Door opens. The door opens. Move into the adjacent chamber. Okay, so wasted a turn trying to get through the door, but luckily I got through. And hopefully it's not a dead end, otherwise our game could be ending very, very quickly. Something needs to open up to the right here. And perfect. Look at that. It's a lovely corridor which opens up all areas around me, so I'm not trapped anymore. And again, by moving into one of these spaces, I draw a dungeon card. Empty. The room is empty. Nothing happens. So it's just a wondrous, big, empty room with loads of different options that we can now go through. So I'm going to continue, I'm going to go right now. I'm going to try and head towards the dragon's chamber, which is in the centre of the board here. So again, time ticks down, and I draw another card. Draw another tile, should I say. Here we go. Open it up. So we come into this way. So again, it loops round. That's not great. So we step into here and it ends up taking us back down this way. We draw a dungeon card as a result. Encounter a monster. Let me tick the time down one as well before I forget. So monster encounters in one player solo games are very, very, um, very, very basic. It's just rolling dice and seeing what happens. So first of all, you draw a monster card from the monster deck, which looks like this. Uh, so I draw one off the top of there. And it is a troll. So I'm fighting a troll here. Let's put there. So fighting a troll. A troll with three health. Let me just double check the rules reference in regards to solo play and fighting monsters solo. Uh, I'm pretty much just rolling dice, I think, if I remember rightly. That's the reference in the actual rules, I think. No, I need this one. First rule checks of the game. Encountering monsters. Uh, no. It's in the solo section. Let me just get that out for you. Okay, yeah, so fighting in combat, here we go. Here we go. At the start of each round of combat, roll one die and consult the chart below. Um, you suffer one wound, you and the monster suffer one wound, the monster suffers one wound, the monster suffers two wounds. So yeah, roll a dice. Okay, cool. Right, so first of all, round one. Lindor versus the troll. I roll a six. The monster suffers two damage, so he's now on one health. Round two. Four. You and, the mo you and the monster each suffer one wound. So that's it. He's dead. The troll's dead, but I suffer one damage as a result of that battle there. So that could have gone a lot worse, but luckily I rolled a good... Um, I got the drop on him to start with. So I'm going to take one health damage. I'm now on 14 health, and the troll is defeated. Luckily it wasn't a, a bad monster. The ambush is gone. Back to the bottom of the pile. Um, so that was the ambush in that room there. And I can continue to go down, but it seems a bit counterproductive. But we'll just go, we'll just roll with it. We'll go, we'll, see, we'll go down and see what happens. Uh, I've done the time track already. Um, so, next room is A. Give it to me. It's a corridor. So, with a corridor, uh, you would immediately step into this room and take another dungeon tile in the same turn. This is a corridor, so it leads somewhere else. And um, I've got a bad feeling this could end up with a dead end. Uh, come on, give it to me. What is it? What is it? Oh, God. It's a bottomless pit. So I've run down this corridor and suddenly I've come across a bottomless pit. Bottomless pits are not good. It's instant death if you fail. Let me just double check the bottomless pit. Oh, yeah. Test your luck. If you succeed, end your turn. If you fail, you die. So basically, this is a trap all, all along. Uh, so I've ran down this corridor and thought, oh, yeah, this is the way to go. And suddenly a bottomless pit. I've stepped into it. Does my character dexterously get out of this or does he fall to his death? Let's see. Test my luck. So my luck is five. So when you're testing something, you have to roll a dice. I think it's two dice, isn't it, when you test? Let me just double check. I think it's two dice when you test. 
which is not great. Yeah, attribute test. Roll two dice and add their results. If the sum is equal to or less, then your test succeeds. So I have to roll two dice and get less than five in order to survive this encounter. Equal to or less? Yes. So he survives the bottomless pit. Wow, thank goodness for that. Um, so he survives the bottomless pit. Time ticks down one. And now he is he's basically on the edge of that room there. But he knows there's nowhere to go, so he's going to be turning back. So on his next turn, he's going to be turning around and going through this corridor and into this room here. And by doing so, he has to draw another dungeon card. Time ticks down by one. And this is a secret door. A secret door. You may immediately move to any adjacent space. If the space is unexplored, place a chamber, tile as normal. If you encounter a monster, you cannot escape. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to place a tile here. You may immediately move to another space adjacent to me. So I'm going to do that. If it's a dead end, I'm screwed. And this is what happened to me before. I went through a secret door and it was a dead end. And it seems like there's a lot of traps in this area as well. Okay, so that's fine. That's, that's cool. Can I orientate in the space of my choice? Yeah, I reckon I can. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll orient it in the space of my choice. If I'm wrong, leave a comment in the section below and we'll see what happens. So a secret door. So I move into this area here and it's a dungeon, just a general dungeon room. Empty, nothing happens. So that's good. Time ticks down one. If I haven't done so already, I've just lost a turn, but never mind. Okay, here we go. Next one. Moving moving towards the dragon chamber now. Let's not get interrupted. Come on, what have we got for me? What have we got for me? Oh, another lovely multiple room with multiple options here. Move into this room here. Draw a dungeon card as normal. Dead adventurer. Okay, so in this room, there's a dead adventurer. You may loot the body for treasure. If you do, draw one corpse card. Do you know what? I'm not going to bother. Actually, yeah, why not? Let's draw a corpse card. And the corpse card is shuffle, which means I discard this card and shuffle all the contents back in. So basically, um, basically means nothing because I always, whenever I discard a card, I always put it to the bottom of the deck anyway. Um, although I guess that maintains the random element, so I'm playing it wrong the whole time, but oh well. You don't normally get through a whole deck of cards anyway, to be honest, unless you unless you're it proper exploring, but yeah, the time track's there, so you probably wouldn't get for a whole deck anyway, to be honest, unless you're drawing a lot of these thinner decks. But um, yeah, so that's the um, that's the encounter in there. Now the time ticks down by one, and I move into this area here. Come on, keep going, keep going forward. Okay, so this is another multi-dimensional room, which I can travel in any direction, but it's full of rubble. It's a cave-in. So I'd move in there and draw a dungeon card. But in order to exit the room, I have to test my strength to try and claw my way through the rubble. My strength isn't great, um, but uh, I draw a dungeon card nonetheless for now. And another monster, ambush by another monster. So whatever caused this cave in is still in there and he's gonna be fighting me today. So that is a, oh wow. It's a golem with six health. So I'm fighting a golem with six health. Again, you roll the dice and consult the chart. So here we go, round one. Five, the monster suffers one damage. He's now on five health. I'll put a dice there to represent his health. Okay, round two. Six, he suffers two damage. So he's now on three. Five, he suffers another damage, so he's now on two. Wow, Linda is smashing these monsters up. Three, uh, you and the monster both suffer one damage. So I suffer another damage. He's only, on one, he's only on one health now, so we should be able to defeat him. Three, me and the monster so both suffer one damage. So he died, but I suffered two damage in that battle. So i get another token for my health. Not sure if you can see my Lindor character. Uh, should be on a wide angle shot, so you should be able to see him. Um, but he's got three different counters on him now um, for his life total. So that's the ambush dealt with. Um, and I think I've advanced time already. Now, in order to get out of this room, I need to test my strength. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and end up in this room here. I need to test my strength. I need to get six or lower. 
six. All right, so five. So I, so I test, I succeed. So I'm going to be moving into this room here. And I'm very, very close now to the dragon's chamber, which is great. What you got for me? What you got for me? Okay, it's not bad. It's portcullis. So let me just double check portcullises. Um, Portcullises are barriers attached to the halls that potentially prevent a player from moving through that hall. If a player attempts to move through a hall containing one or more portcullises, he must first test strength. If he succeeds, he continues his movement as normal. Okay, so let me just do that. So I've, I've tested my strength to get in, to get into this room. Now I to, oh, I've tested my strength to get out of the rubble, but now I'm testing my strength again to get through the portcullis. So I need six or lower. Four, five, no. So I, do, I don't succeed there. Time ticks down by one and I gain a Determination Token because I failed a test. But because I'm Lindor, I get an additional Determination Token. Determination Tokens can basically subtract um, results from your dice, which allow you to get through tests easier. So again, that's a wasted turn. And again, I'm going to try and open this portcullis. Need six or below, which is great. So I succeed. I get into there. Time ticks down by one, and I draw a Dungeon card. Another unstable potion. So I've got two of these bad boys now, which I can use if I'm absolutely desperate for health, which I'm not at the moment because I'm, only on, I'm still on 12 health, so I should be okay. And it's opened up this way now. So all I need now is a dungeon tile that veers off to the right, and I'm okay. What are we drawing? And we have it. It's a spider web. But it does veer off to the right. Um, so the spider web immediately move again, uh, ignoring all doors and portcullises. Um, so we move into here. Um, if you would exit through any hall other than the hall you entered, test your strength. If you succeed, exit the chamber normally. Um, if you uh, fail, it immediately end your turn. Okay, so again, we've moved in. Time goes down by one. There is no dungeon. Um, there is no dungeon card there. I think a spider web is a corridor. Move immediately. Immediately move again. Yeah, okay, so I'll move immediately move again, testing my strength to try and get through, which is six. Uh, I've got seven, but I'm going to use a determination token that I've got earlier to succeed that. So that goes down to a five, and I've got a six. So that's fine. I've, I've succeeded. And now I'm in the, the dragon's chamber. So fairly um, a fairly easy run uh, for Lindell this particular game, um, but it can be a lot harder than that. And, um, you know, sometimes you have to resort to going underground and into the catacombs, and that's when it gets really deadly. But luckily we've had a nice little run here, and we've got through to the uh, the Dragon's Chamber without much, um, without much um, effort. Now, every time you go into the Dragon's Chamber, you draw a Dragon deck card. So I'm going to draw that now. And the Dragon is asleep. So I draw two treasure cards. So I draw two treasure cards from here and I get a giant ruby and a belt of strength. So that's cool. That goes straight into my character inventory. Time ticks down by one. Now you can decide what to do here. Um, you can press your luck and draw another dragon card. But if the dragon is awake, you suffer loads of damage and you lose all of your treasure and all of your progress so far in the chamber. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try one more time, I think but it does get addictive. He's still asleep, which is cool. cool. So I've got to draw two more treasure cards and I get a rune scarab and a ruby ring. Okay, so he's still asleep. Now I can choose to do it. I'm gonna do it one more time, press my luck one more time and he's still asleep, which is great. Draw two more treasure cards. So I get a gin lamp and eyes of Avra. Now Lindor's not a greedy fella. He, he's realised that he's 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 got a load of treasure here, um, and he's going to um, and he's going to exit. He's going to exit the dragon chamber. Um, so on his next turn, time ticks down by one again. Uh, he's going to move into here. He gets to a move again, so he's going to test his strength. It's six, so he moves again. So he's now in this room here. You draw a dungeon card as a result. It's a crypt, he may explore it, but he's not going to. Um, okay, so time ticks down by one. He needs to test his strength to get through this portcullis, which is six. He, get, he rolls a five, so he gets through there. That's great. 
Now he's in the cave-in, so he draws a dungeon card, which is a dead adventurer. He can choose to loot that, but he's not going to. Time ticks down. Now he's going to try and test his agility to get through this room, which is six. Seven, I'm going to use my determination token that I got earlier to discard that, to move that down to a five, and therefore it's a six, so he gets through. He draws a dungeon card in this room. Curse of the Wizard. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, this isn't as bad. So this is a Curse of the Wizard. So what this does is you roll a dice. I get five. Consult the chart. Uh, roll one die and rotate all corridors in the following directions. Five to six is 90 degrees counterclockwise. Um, so corridors um, in this particular setup is only this one here. This is the only corridor that's in the game right now. The others are just dungeon rooms. So that's the only one that um, rotates itself. Luckily, we don't, we don't plan to go on that way anyway. We're just going all the way back through the way we came. Luckily, there's a nice clear path. This here seems like a um, seems like a dead end, but there was a secret door here. Uh, so I'm going to say that that secret door, now that I've found it, I can go back through it. I could be wrong, but you know, thematically, you found a door, you know where it is, you can go back through, I'd say. Okay, so that was the, uh, the, the dungeon tile for that, uh, dungeon card for that particular room there. Now I move into this one here. Time ticks down by one. Draw another dungeon card. It's an ambush, another monster battle. Draw a monster card, and it is a another golem with two, with four health this time. So let me just put his dice on there to represent his health. Um, okay, so here's the battle again. Two. So the monster actually hurts me there, I think. Um, let me just double check. I think the monster does one damage to me in that case. Uh, two. Yeah, you suffer one damage. So I suffer one damage there. One damage, too little. Roll again, round two. One, I'd suffer another damage. Great. And now on 66% life. Roll another dice. Six. I did two damage to him. So he's now on two. Three. You and the monster both suffer one damage. So he's on one life. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. One. There's another damage to me. Great. Piling up the wounds right now. Three. You and the monster both suffer one damage. So he's dead. I suffer another damage. Oh, that was a costly battle there. Okay. So he's dead. These ambushes are battering me. So that was that. That was that room there. Ambush. Ambush, 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 ambush. So, okay, so he was defeated. Okay, time ticks down by one, if I don't remember. Now I move back into this room here, the secret door. That was where the secret door was, so I'm going to say I can move back in. So, uh, dungeon deck. The room is empty. Just in case you can't see, the room is empty. Which is great for us. Time ticks down. Move into here. Draw dungeon card. The room is empty. This is great. This is fucking great. Room is empty. Move again into this room. Draw a card. Oh, there was a door there, wasn't there? So I need to open the door again, I think. Let's say the door is open. Um, no, let's say I have to open the door. So open the door. Door opens. There we go. That's thematic. Luckily, I could get through that door after jamming it slightly earlier. So I get through that door into this room, draw a dungeon card. Dead adventurer, do I want to loot it? Probably not. It's not worth it. It's been this horrible thing to happen. Time ticks down by one. Move again to this room. Draw the final dungeon card of the game. It is empty. Nothing happens. And then move into here. Time ticks down by one. And just in case, uh, I move again to get out of there. Right, so okay, so let's tally up our score. So in value order, we have the giant ruby that we got. Uh, next up is the eyes of Avra. <coughs> Bless me. And then we have the rune scarab. Then we have the D20 
Stygian lamp. Then we have the belt of strength. And last but not least, the ruby ring. So all of our stuff tallied up to 3,420, 3,820, 4,090, um, 4,290, 4,350, um, 4,490, 4,490 points I got in that game. 4,490 points. Uh, I'll probably revisit this uh, again at some point to see if I can beat... Um, to beat that score, what would have happened if I stayed another turn in the Dragon Chamber? Let's have a look. I thought if I would have drew another card, he would have been sleeping. So I would have been able to get two more treasures. What would, have, what would happen if I drew another one? He would have still been sleeping. What happened if I would have drew another one? He would have awoken. Dragon Rage. So I could have searched the Dragon's Chamber two more times and that's the difficult thing that's the decisions that you have to come with come face to face with in this game do you want to be greedy or do you just want to get out alive with some loot that is the real question now a lot of uh mechanics were missed in this game um because it's very very random it all determines on what rooms you get and i got very very lucky i did think oh damn it this first tile was rubbish that was a dead end immediately and then this created a bit of tension because all it was doing was leading forwards um so there was a little bit of tension at the start but luckily i got a secret door that opened up the way to a clear run to the dragon chamber uh, but it could be a lot worse you could have to be exploring catacombs and you know trying to search these rooms desperately trying to find an answer um you could encounter traps or you could you know have to search bodies or crypts to try and find answers um it's a really really good game really really simple to play and I just thought i'd introduce you to dungeon quest um doesn't really get much buzz anymore it's been and gone but again a timeless classic that me and uh, me and some friends still enjoy because of the sheer random quality and um when you're playing with other people as well you get to see some horrible things happen to your friends so it's great in that respect but yeah uh 4490 points i think is what i tallied up 4490 we'll see if we can beat it again maybe in a month or a couple of months or so depending on what content's getting rolled out at the time but again, thanks for tuning in to another Pass the Turn Tabletop Tuesdays segment. We're going to be filming a lot of board game content this coming weekend. Um, so see a lot more group board game activities coming soon every Tuesday. Um, if you like Magic the Gathering, tune in every Monday for more Magic the Gathering content. Tune in every Tuesday for board game content, which is what you're watching right now. And make sure you come back every two weeks on a Wednesday because that's when we're carry on, carrying on our D&D &D campaign, The Mysteries of Neverwinter, where I personally play a lizard folk samurai who has, um, he's pretty, pretty dull-witted. Um, but yeah, visit, go and visit that if you haven't done so already. I've been Aaron Francis. Like and subscribe to Pass the Turn and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.